go. Hello and welcome to the new Science and Health building, home to all our HLS um, courses. So this is the main atrium of the, the new building. To my right here we've got the, the Starbucks Cafe, which will be opening when the new build opens on the 2nd of October. And we've also got a new entrance to our sports centre to my left. So first we'll head to the Sports and Exercise Science Suite. This area is to be used by sports therapy students and sports and exercise science students. So along the floor we've got a big um, long blue running track and then either side of these grey rigs are 3D cameras so they track the body movements as the students are running down and they can watch it back on the computer screen. That kind of building at the back there is where the sports therapy students will practice their techniques on each other and members of the public. Then if we head this way we've got various different pieces of, of gym equipment. And this room is going to be a strength and conditioning lab. So what that means is when the students are sitting on the exercise bikes, um, they'll be able to change the oxygen levels, the temperature, the wind speeds, and then monitor how the students react to these and then analyze. So now we'll head down towards the ambulance. Will the students be using this from this term, will they? Yeah, so when the new world opens on the 2nd of October, the students will be, will be in here practicing their skills and using the different various um, equipment. So as you can see, as we're heading down towards the ambulance, we've got seating area for staff and students to come at lunch times. And just to note, as we go through the building, that it's finishing touches are still underway, so there might still be some construction equipment around. So our paramedic suite for our paramedic students, we've got a full-size um, ambulance modelled on a London bay. All, all equipment inside the ambulance works. And they've also got a bit of an outdoor area so they can reenact outdoor scenes and then practice bringing them into the ambulance. And what we'll also notice is that um, up and there are cameras around the room where teachers can monitor what the students are doing without actually being in the room themselves and can change the conditions and then see the students react to that. So now we'll head up to the first floor and see some of the simulation maps. So this is one of our multifunctional rooms. So as we can notice, the tables are actually on wheels. So at the moment, it's a classroom setup. But what we can do is wheel the tables out of the way and make it a more practical setup. To feed kind of insoles for shoes or supports for feet. Um, you'll also notice that classrooms either inside or just outside have lockers, so students can place bags or um, coats in there, so it's kind of about the way of the classroom space. So we'll now head towards our mock wards. So we've got our room on the left here at HDU Ward. And we've got our simulation man who's coughing and breathing for us. We've got one of our um, nurses and um, lecturers here. So oh, yeah. Yeah. HDU Ward is for like, severely ill patients that are too um, ill to go back in the normal ward. So sometimes after an operation, they'll come to this high dependency unit 
um, to have a kind of a little bit more personalised care. Please, give me something for this pain, it hurts, it really. <coughs> and it's programmed with various different kind of scenarios. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 can program anything, anything you like, any disease, any illness, any condition. I'm just practicing at the moment. <laughs> This is our main ward area. So as you can see, we've got hospital-style beds in. Um, each bed space has um, emergency buttons on the wall, which will all work, and some gas um, chambers on the wall, which will work. And then we've got our fully functioning nurses station. And just like the paramedic ambulance suite, we've got cameras throughout the room. Um, and we've got control rooms just outside the classroom, where teachers will be, um, so they don't kind of have to directly watch the pupils from inside this room. So it feels like a real hospital, doesn't it? Doesn't feel yeah, like it's laid out hospital. very much like a real hospital. Um, very realistic. Again, this is another one of our multifunctional rooms. So over on that side, we've got showers, um, baths, toilets, where um, occupational therapy students will practice on each other as if they work with the patient, get them in and out of the shower or running off the toilet. And as we pan around, we've got various hoists, um, again, which different members of the team will use, occupational therapists, physiotherapists, a few different pieces of equipment, such as wheelchairs. Also note that um, rather than a projector on a screen, all kind of information will be displayed on a TV. Uh, for the students to access during the tutorials. What course do you study? So I study physiotherapy. I'll be heading into third year. Um, so this is a really good building for me to get to use all the brand new facilities. So this is our mock operating theatre space to be used by students on the operating department team um, course. So as you can see we've got our bed here and our operating light. And then that kind of big machine there is what an anaesthetist will use to put you to sleep. And again we've got various gases on the wall which all um, work as they would in a real kind of ward. This kind of room through here is a scrub room um, where you need to wash your hands, put your gowns on, your glasses on, um, scrub up before you can safely perform an operation. Okay, so from here we'll head towards our two purpose built houses. Hopefully everyone that saw the Facebook Live we did last year and it was a building site can see just the difference it's made now. Again, if you head down towards the houses, we've got some more seating area for students. And we've got some of our smaller teaching rooms. So we've got two purpose built houses here, House A and House B. House A is kind of a modelled on a standard house. While well, that's house B, which we'll go in in a second, is a little bit more adaptable for wheelchair users. So we'll notice in the kitchen that the oven's a little bit lower and the counters can actually um, raise up and down. <laughs> so we enter the kitchen area, as you can see, um, oven and microwave is a little bit lower down. And these counters do actually raise up and down. So for wheelchair users, and again, the top cupboard will also raise up in there. Okay. Living room space, you'll see we've got a um, nice sofa coming in, table and chairs, um, TV which is soon to be fixed to the wall. Some compass views outside as well. Mm -hmm. So 
so this is the bedroom. So we've got a small bed, um, nice large fitted wardrobe at the back there. Toilet, um, which again has the disabled fittings of the handrails um, and that's kind of a walk-in shower cubicle so if they're unable to step in and out of the bath um, then they can just kind of get their wheelchair straight in to, to be showered. Have a nice comment come through here, Fran saying you make an excellent tour guide. Oh, so thank you. <laughs> it's amazing open space really, isn't it? It fits so much in, but there's so much lovely open space too. Yes, this is one of the therapy labs used by sports therapy and physiotherapy students. There are five of these identical labs um, throughout this second floor. So each of the labs kind of tails for a different area of physiotherapy. Um, so there are kind of three core areas, uh, musculoskeletal, cardio, and neuro. And then there'll be like brains, there'll be hearts, there'll be muscles in each of the different rooms. Um, so they can cater for each of the, the areas. We've got our plinth beds where the students will practice their skills on each other before kind of going out to placement. And then obviously we've got the TV again, um, which will display information and a full life-size skeleton, so they can identify all the bones as necessary. We've had a request, Brandon. What? Uh, give us a wave from Bruce Lee. Hello. <laughs> so it's the 2nd of October, official opening, but there's already students obviously using yeah, the Yeah, so there's post-grad students using certain areas. Um, but the rest of the campus, it'll be the second lockdown. So again, we've got a little bit more seating area just outside of the classrooms where students can wait before they enter. Um, so the third and fourth floor of this building is analytical labs, whereby we need lab coats and, and glasses to go in on in there. And there's also postgraduate um, studies going on in there, so we won't be um, going up there on this tour. So we're just going to head back down uh, the main kind of set of stairs to where we started in the atrium, uh, where the tour began. Lots of people commenting saying it looks amazing, so yeah. Uh, yeah, hopefully they'll be able to see it for themselves at an open day or pop in for our dropping day to see the new building all its glory. So. Yeah. You'll get a full year use of this space, won't you, from being yes, third year now to get to the final third year again. Yeah. We're back at the main entrance where we started. Thank you very much for the quick tour of the new Science and Health building. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Brandon. Thank, Thank you very much.